Good morning, friends. It is Friday, December 11th already, 2020. My name is Kama Hamilton Morton. And instead of doing last evening's meditation, I thought, oh, it's supposed to be cold and snowy. And wouldn't that be cool to be outside on the balcony and record with uh, the snow and the lights and things. But I forgot that uh, Friday in around our building where we live, <laughs> Friday is a noisy morning. The uh, trucks are out doing garbage and recycling and things and, and there's beeps and clashes and things. So I'm inside, but right outside my back is our balcony, which extends the length of our, um, our little uh, condo. And we have lights on the inside of the balcony, which we enjoy all year long. And I don't know if you'll be able with the camera to see the trees, but there is snow out. It is cold. The high is supposed to be 30 today. So I am just um, in this second week of Advent that's coming to, toward the end. I'm feeling this season again, this Northern Hemisphere season of, of snow and chill in the air the crisp breathing in and what that can feel like for us as we continue this Advent journey together. And so let us begin with, there we go, with a little Psalm prayer. Ah, so take a breath. Hope in God. You brought all things into being and know the secrets of the furthest galaxies as well as those within the hidden universe of the human heart. May we hope in your faithful love which surrounds us all our days. Amen. Isn't that nice? And I'd like to share from one of the some of the classic scriptures around Advent and Christmas is the prophet Isaiah. The imagery, the metaphors that Isaiah shares. Um, Isaiah was written, you know, centuries before the birth of Jesus. But uh, this sense of longing for um, one who will come is is very present. So you may find some of these images familiar. From Isaiah 11. A shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse. A branch will sprout from his roots. The Lord's spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing of the Lord. He won't judge by appearances, nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity for those who suffer in the land. He will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth. By the breath of his lips, he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt around his hips and faithfulness the belt around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze, their young will lie down together, and a lion will eat straw like an ox. A nursing child will play over the snake's hole. Toddlers will reach right over the serpent's den. They won't harm or destroy anywhere on my holy mountain. The earth will surely be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, just as the water covers the sea. Isn't that, that's that image of the beloved kingdom or the heavenly kingdom that hoped for the lion and the lamb and the child will lead them, right? Um, what would that, that sense of yearning or longing for you, how would you describe uh, in your life the yearnings that you have for what could be? And if not so grandeur as Isaiah 
What about starting with your space, your place, your people, your family or friendship circles, your work, your the needs, the bills that are be needing to be paid? What are the yearnings and the hopes that you would put out to God, to the universe this day as we navigate on the path of Advent? Mm. Well, here is a little reflection from uh, in our Guide to Prayer for All Who Walk with God, Deborah Smith Douglas, Enclosed in Darkness. From firsthand knowledge, Jesus understands our inevitable times of being enclosed or imprisoning narrowness with no way out. Christ not only understands these moments because he has had his own, he also comes to share ours with us to lighten our darkness, to love us beside us from inside our walls of stone. This is the inestimable gift that we approach in this season of Advent, the saving gift of the love of God in the incarnation, the unfailing presence of God with us in all our darkness. This presence is so powerful and all-encompassing that absolutely nothing can divide us from it. As St. Paul reminds us, neither life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And that's from Romans 8. Have you had moments of feeling enclosed or of an imprisoning narrowness? I like that. That's a very challenging, um, provocative image. That you are in a place that you feel hard to get out of or through and that you may feel alone. Where is the presence of uh, Christ therein or of God's loving presence? Is there a place of hope for us in those moments? Hmm. Well, I had one more that I'd like to share. I just find these readings, you know, if there was anybody, I was thinking after the first of the year, these guide to prayer books are so cool. And there are people in churches or, or just communities where people will gather in small groups and once a week will come together and we'll go through the, the, the guide to prayer, having read and prayed and looked at some of these reflections, and then they'll come and talk about it. And I thought, boy, that would be a, a little table talk group would be really um, cool. Because I'm sure this season have been returning back to them and, and finding some wisdom in them. So this is from Michael Downey, uh, Gifts Constant Coming is the name of the writing. And he says this, what I have come to see is that there is nothing more important to human beings than hope. Certainly in our own day, many people live without explicitly religious faith and evidence of loveless lives is tragically abundant, but people usually do not survive long without hope. They cannot because hope is the very heart of a human being. We live in a profoundly disruptive and disorienting age. On every street, behind every door, lives someone who is deeply disheartened, if not actually despairing. This may be brought on by the awareness of massive and meaningless death, the randomness of violence, the onset of early illness, the loss of a loved one or job or sense of meaning and value, or by the loss of cherished and heretofore reliable ways of thinking and speaking of God. Indeed, even by the loss of faith in God. But this loss, too, can be beckon us to deeper levels of openness to hope, the kind of hope that is absolutely and altogether gift. 
Hope is not the same thing as optimism that things will go our way or turn out well. It is rather the certainty that something makes sense is worth the cost regardless of how it might turn out. Hope is a sense of what might yet be. It strains ahead, seeking a way behind and beyond every obstacle. Boy, isn't that powerful? For any of us that have been in those moments of deeply disheartened, if not actually despairing, or know others that are or have been, and many reasons that can bring us, uh, bring people to those moments, and he lists some of those, that hope is not the same thing as optimism that every, everything will work out all right but the certainty that regardless of how it turns out, it's worth doing, it's worth the cost, it's worth working toward a better world, a better life, opening ourselves to what might be. So may we receive blessing in these uh, readings. Wherever you are these this day, friends, may the spirit of Advent enfold you. I was delighted this morning, and, and this isn't a political yay or nay on any side, but the um, there was a little video of Doug Emhoff and Kamala Harris as they talked about Hanukkah. Doug is a, a Jewish uh, person, and their family has celebrated Hanukkah, and it was just really delightful how they expressed it. Um, our fr friends in the Jewish faith last night in the evening began the season of Hanukkah for this uh, year and they talked about the symbolism and the meaning of hope and life and light coming into the world in times of justice and of seeking justice and it was just really um, a good companion uh, Hanukkah is not Advent they're, se they're separate but to a companion on the journey of life and faith with those our friends in the Jewish community. So our blessings to them as they are in this uh, season of Hanukkah and blessings on us. And so I'm going to conclude by singing a simple little song, but first, uh, oh, I'll sing and then, I'll, then we'll come back around to the blessing. And this, sometimes people are like, oh, this song, we sing it when we light the Advent candles in church, and sometimes it can kind of drone on. But the words and the metaphors were kind of uh, sweet, and think about the stories that lead us to the birth of Christ uh, in, uh, in Matthew and Luke. Light the Advent candle. Light the Advent candle one, now the waiting has begun. We have started on our way. Time to think of Christmas Day. Candle, candle burning bright, shining in the cold winter's night. Candle, candle burning bright, fill our hearts with Christmas light. Light the Advent candle too. Think of humble shepherds who, filled with wonder at the sight of the child on Christmas night. Light the Advent candle three. Think of heavenly harmony, angels singing peace on earth at the Holy Savior's birth. Candle, candle burning bright, fill our shining in the cold winter's night. Candle, candle burning bright, Fill our hearts with Christmas light. 
Light the advent candle for, think of joy forevermore. Christ child in a stable born, gift of love that Christmas morn. Light the advent candle now, think of donkey, sheep, and cow. Birthday candles for the king, let the alleluias ring. Candle, candle, burning bright, shining in the cold winter's night. Candle, candle, burning bright, fill our hearts with Christmas light. So may we receive the power and the presence of that candle inside of our hearts and minds and spirits, even as we see the twinkling of lights around us uh, in the cities, in the streets, in the downtowns, balconies, <laughs> wherever you can be connected to that symbol. And if you find yourself, friends, in those moments, in those places of uh, disheartenedness, of being enclosed with imprisoning narrowness. May you breathe deep the knowledge and the love of God surrounding you and holding you. And may you find strength in yourself, in others. Turn to others. Reach out through a call or a video chat or a card or a text and connect with those who can help us on the way this day. We are on the journey together, and we will get there together. And so may we go forth. We'll take a break. This concludes our week two meditations. We'll um, hopefully start again Sunday evening. And now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in faith so that we overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go forth this day, this weekend, embrace the hope, the promise, and the giftedness that is within you to be a light to the world. See you later. Bye-bye.